In this video, we're going to talk about the brand new updates to Diffusion B. Diffusion B has finally dropped an update. A few months had gone by and people were wondering if this thing was dead. Shockingly enough, just dropped a brand new update. So happy about that. If you haven't checked it out, Diffusion B is a super easy way to run Stable Diffusion. Just It's literally a one click install. You don't need any coding. You don't need to know Python or anything like that. You download from the various versions that are available, GitHub address. So you have the 1.5.2 ARM64 MPS version, you have the TF version, and you have the Intel version. With this brand new version, safer way to import custom models, improve some bugs, have the custom model option now in the front so it's easier to see, resizable outpainting box, a negative prompt for the outpainting, which is wonderful. Check out the Discord because there's always more updates and feedback and, and things people find that can be fixed and improved or bugs that are there. And a lot of the most common questions are asked a thousand times, and most of the time, most of the time, you can find the answers in there anyway. So diving right here into Diffusion B, for those who are kind of curious on which version is which, on the right is the previous version, the 1.5.1 version, and on the left is the brand new updated version here. I'm using the MPS version, which is, I guess, faster than the TF version from what I've heard from other people talking about it in, in the Discord there. So another thing people often ask is if you can use like safe tensors and all these other little things, but that's not currently available with Diffusion B. Um, using some custom models like the automatic 1.1 uh, uh, option there, that's not an option with Diffusion P. Like for that, they have like specific things you can use, like you know your brackets and space and slashes to like emphasize and add weighting to different things. Currently, Diffusion P doesn't have that, but you can use custom models just have to make sure that if they have uh, special activation tokens that you are utilizing those. And those are normally found like in the information uh, where you're getting the actual model from. So as I've kind of uh, talked about before, Civit AI has a lot of models on there. Just make sure that you're using like the checkpoint version and you should be okay, but not every model will work. So it'll have to be like a little trial and error. So I have the same prompt copied from the, you know, the left to right and I'm gonna see what this is. I'm not gonna use any custom models just yet, but just looking at the overall layout, it looks pretty similar to the previous one. The only difference is now, next to styles and the prompt ideas is now the model. So you can actually see which model you're utilizing. You can switch through your models really quickly versus the old one, you had to go under options and then you scroll down and then you had to click on your custom models from here and now it's just right there, which is pretty uh, helpful. So I'm gonna run the same prompt on the new version versus the old, and I'm just gonna use this uh, online stopwatch to kind of compare. So I'm gonna hit start and we're gonna generate and see how long this takes. So start, and I'm gonna compare it to the older models, see if it actually is faster. So I haven't loaded any custom model. This is just using the standard one that comes uh, by default with it. So close to around a minute and four seconds. So let's try this now with the other diffusion b so i'm gonna just we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna hit start and here we go so start and generate 340 or 339 around there so here's from the older model there and from the newer model so let's see what we can uh there there were some complaints uh we're gonna also try out the outpainting stuff in a second here but one of them from the previous one is when you're changing your um, guidance scale, like there's no indication of what number I'm on right here on the old one. And it doesn't seem like they did that with the new one, which is really frustrating because am I at like, you know, 10.3, am I at 11? Like I have to guesstimate what number I'm on and I, not a big fan of the slider and i know i'm not the only one out there negative prompting again you can enable that on the previous version and the newer one on the newer one it's uh you still have to do the same amount of steps go to options and enable or disable and then you can add your you know what you don't want included so like a uh, red t-shirt um i don't know uh, neon lights in the background font text or things like the watermarks It'll get rid of that from the image. So let's try out painting. 
and try to do a comparison from the old and the new. So this dragon dropped a little werewolf guy into both the new version on the left here and the old version on the right. So on the old version, I guess you can also rescale this. It's just not as clear, but you weren't able to scale down this box or scale up the box, which is a little frustrating. So I can say, I'll kind of get this roughly where I want it to be. And then I will kind of do the same for this. So I'm gonna scale up this box. All right, and I'm gonna scale down this image. I already like the sliders. Makes it a lot easier. You can see how frustrating this was in the previous one. So I have the same prompt for the new and the old, and I'm gonna add now a, um, under options, you can enable negative prompts. But another complaint that people had and doesn't seem like they've changed just yet is an option to save like your most used and most common prompts, which would be a huge time saver. And that's not an option just yet, it doesn't look like as well as having the option to save some of the activation tokens for specific models, like to have those associated. So if you're using like, uh, I don't know, like the Spider-Verse or the Arcane model, those have like little activation tokens to get those specific models to really run. Um, and it'd be nice to kind of have an option to save that, but they don't have that just yet. So again, we're gonna run a comparison now we're gonna run the same test for the same prompt. I just have a werewolf at a rave, uh, let's say in a hat. Why not? Okay, I'm gonna copy this over. And then paste this over here as well. So I'm gonna run the old version first. I even closed out a few more things in the background and let's see if that improves this. So we're gonna press start and then generate. So there we go. Again, for those who may have come across this channel through my other videos, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see uh, more in this channel. So let's pause this now at around three minutes and I think it was like 52 seconds if we, you know, give or take the amount of time it took me to press start and for this thing to go. What did it do? It gave us a weird gray looking background with lights. Okay, that didn't, oh, I mean, I guess you can say this is a wraith. <laughs> it didn't really add anything, and no hats, no, okay. It is what it is, so let's clear this out. Let's try the same prompt with the new model and see, or the new version of B and see what it does. Hit start and generate. And I can pause it right here. So at around a minute and I think it was like, give or take, two seconds or so, so about a minute and 34 seconds, we'll say, this thing uh, managed to generate an image. Gave me a werewolf, it used my image, it kept the overall image, it actually blended the background very well um, with the foreground, and, like put the other wolves in the foreground. Oh, I don't know what happened there, that looks crazy, okay. Um, <laughs> it went from a werewolf to like just a weird dog looking thing. It did it in significantly a shorter amount of time, I, almost two minutes and 18 seconds less time to actually generate the out painting. So that's actually really impressive. So the speed has definitely improved. So this was another thing that people complained about is the tools to actually be able to adjust the size of this thing. So like when you're masking things out, if you're erasing, if you're painting in, there's no adjustment slider for that. I can't adjust the sides of this thing erasing, and that's a little frustrating. Okay, but you know what I didn't see? is an option to redo. Did you see an option to redo? The outpainting doesn't have an option to redo. So they don't have this in the outpainting option, which is kind of silly, because I mean, you're gonna be using the same tool, right? Why not have that as a adjustable thing? Anyway, so we're gonna try to see if we can give this person a helmet of some kind. Okay, so diving back into the new version of Fusion B, I'm gonna see what this thing will do with this prompt of old detailed Viking helmet. And I don't see an option for negative prompts, which I don't know why they wouldn't have that as a thing. 
Wouldn't that make sense to have an option for negative prompts? Like, hey, I don't want, or oh, whatever. So I'm gonna press in painting and let's see how fast this thing will go here. And now that I have all of my other browsers and stuff closed in about 30 seconds, which isn't bad. It seems like it's gonna be able to crank this out. The more details I give this thing, the more detailed the outcome's gonna be. So you wanna use words like, you know, intricate, elegant, uh, ornate, things like that to kind of give you more detailed things. Um, okay, so it gave me a helmet. Um, let's try to redo that though, because I don't know what it did with nose. And, you know, this, being that this is running you know, independently, I'm still really impressed with the speed improvement because it is, as you saw, quite a lot faster by almost like two minutes almost uh, with generating an image. And that was with a few things open. So when it's, you know, nothing else open but itself, it's going really fast. I think that pretty much covers the main things that they've updated, speed improvements, less bugginess, made choosing your model a little uh, more straightforward. Although, again, um, I'll swap this over to the graffiti one. I wish there was an option to save your your activation tokens that are associated with specific models, which they don't have, which is very frustrating. <sighs> so. If you don't have that, then you either have to save it on a Word file or go back to where you originally found the, the model and then look at any information they have there as far as what words you're supposed to use and then put it in your prompt and then you'll be able to generate the image with that token. But until then, this is it is what it is. So anyway, y'all, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you will stay tuned for any new updates as I will be talking about those. And I'll probably compare this uh, Diffusion B to draw things and uh, let me know what you think. All right, y'all. I will talk to you soon.